I'm here to defend the government's record in the deployment of counter-fraud measures over the last two years or so. But I will only be able to do that in part. The assertion made by the Economic Secretary of the Treasury in the Commons debate last week that the priority was speed of distribution of funds is absolutely correct. But what has followed has been nothing less than desperately inadequate. Given the time available, I will focus on one or two emblematic failures, but these issues run far wider. The oversight by both Bayes and the British Business Bank of the panel lenders of BBLs has been nothing less than woeful. They have been assisted by the Treasury, who appear to have no knowledge or little interest in the consequences of fraud to our economy or society. Much store has been given to the extra money allocated to HMRC, but it took a year to happen, and this department is already the most competent and well-funded in that discipline. Whereas at the beginning of COVID, Bayes had the grand total of two counter-fraud officials on its staff, neither of whom were experienced in the subject. They refused to engage constructively with the counter-fraud function that sits in the Cabinet Office, has considerable expertise and reports directly to me. Schoolboy errors were made, for example, allowing over a thousand companies to receive bounce back loans that were not even trading when COVID struck. They simply failed to understand that company formation agents hold in stock companies with earlier creation dates. I've been arguing with Treasury and Bayes officials for nearly two years to get them to lift their game. I have been mostly unsuccessful. My Lords, you can see it is my deeply held conviction that the current state of affairs is not acceptable. Given that I'm the Minister for Counter-Fraud, it feels somewhat dishonest to stay on in that role if I'm incapable of doing it properly, let alone defending the, the, our track record. It is that, for this reason that I've sadly decided to tender my resignation as a Minister across the Treasury and Cabinet Office with immediate effect. I would be grateful if my noble Lord would pass this letter on to the Prime Minister at his earliest convenience. It is worth saying that none of this relates to far more dramatic political events being played out across Westminster. This is not an attack on the Prime Minister, and I'm sorry for the inconvenience it will cause. Indeed, I think any Prime Minister should be able to reasonably expect that the levers of government were actually connected to delivering services for our citizens. I hope that as a virtually unknown minister beyond this place, giving up my career might prompt others more important than me to get behind this and sort it out. It matters for all the obvious reasons, but there is a penny of income tax waiting to be claimed here if we just woke up. Total fraud loss across government is estimated at 29 billion a year. Of course, not all can be stopped, but a combination of arrogance, indolence and ignorance freezes the government machine. Action taken today will give this government a sporting chance of cutting income tax before a likely May 2024 election. If my removal helps that to happen, it would have been worth it. So it leaves me only to thank the noble Lord, Lord Tunnicliffe, for his courteous but attentive role as my shadow minister of my portfolio, and to thank noble friends, many of whom I know will carry on their scrutiny of this important area. Thank you, and goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah.